Almost a month after Turkey's invasion of northern Syria, there was no let up in the fighting. The Kurds were once more forced to defend the land they called home. The aftershocks from President Trump's decision, which allowed Turkey to invade, continue to reverberate. Only an hour's drive from the front lines in the town of Kobani, Nishti Murad, the school teacher, had decided to stay. She wasn't ready to give up the dream of a Kurdish homeland, Rojava. I think uh, Rojava is a region for people to live uh, in peace, for all people. It's a self-control uh, area for the Kurds. Uh, we just want, uh, wanted our rights. Nishti was brave. She was also nervous. She constantly checked for news. Not easy, as cell phone service was largely disrupted. She was trying to figure out where the feared militias would attack next. While the waiting went on, she worked hard to try to make life as normal as possible, keeping to daily routines to keep herself and her relatives calm. But Nishti had made a big decision. I decided if Turkey came here, I would be here and I'll fight. So I'll fight till the end. Turkey's President Erdogan wasn't just invading and destroying Rojava and the Kurdish way of life. He planned to resettle the area with up to three million mostly Arab refugees living in Turkey. Turkish television showed mock-ups of the new homes and schools contractors planned to build for the millions of new arrivals. The goal was to wipe out the Kurdish homeland in Syria before Kurds in Turkey started getting ideas. Turkey has 18 to 20 million ethnic Kurds as Turkish citizens. Uh, Erdogan is concerned that the Kurds in Turkey are going to want something similar to Rojava. So Erdogan wanted to mm, strangle the baby uh, in its cradle by destroying Rojava and preventing Turkey's Kurds from aspiring to the same. Despite all that, just this week, President Erdogan was honored with an invitation to the White House. Ethnic cleansing was not on the agenda. We're grateful to President Erdogan and to the citizens of Turkey for their cooperation in the constant struggle against terrorism. He fights it like we do. Down, down, Erdogan! Outside the White House, they hadn't forgotten what was happening to the Kurds. Erdogan is ISIS! Erdogan is ISIS! We never promised the Syrian Kurds that we'd be there forever, but we did promise at least we wouldn't totally abandon them. Uh, you know, in the whim of one night. And that's kind of what ended up happening. It just devalues the credibility of an American handshake, an American commitment uh, around the world. But leaving the Middle East, apparently no matter what the cost, had always been President Trump's one consistent message. We want to bring our troops back home. It's been many, many years. It's been decades in many cases. We want to bring our troops back home. And I got elected on that. It was always a reliable applause line. Bring our soldiers back home. Bring our soldiers back home. So it was all the more surprising when President Trump seemed to go back on that promise too. He decided there was a good reason to keep American troops in Syria after all. It just wasn't to protect the Kurds. We want to bring our soldiers home, but we did leave soldiers because we're keeping the oil. I like oil. We're keeping the oil. President Trump became so interested in securing Syria's oil fields that he ordered more American troops and heavy weapons to go to Syria for the new mission. So American troops weren't coming home. These are small facilities. Our legal basis for being in Syria is ISIS, not to protect oil. So the mission is very unclear. President Trump tweeted in what seemed like an afterthought, if the Kurds wanted protection, perhaps it is time for the Kurds to start heading to the oil region, a desert where no Kurds had ever lived. President Trump was effectively asking the Kurds to abandon Rojava while under attack in an invasion he allowed to happen and ethnically cleanse themselves. That was an incredible thing for an American president to say, that maybe Kurds should move from their traditional areas um, into the desert where there's oil, because we will have U.S. forces around those oil fields. Um, 
I just, it's a remarkable statement, and um, it's the type of thing you might hear from Erdogan, not from an American president. Nishti and her family were furious that President Trump seemed to value oil over allies. Donald Trump is not wise enough to lead America. I really bl blame the American people for choosing such a crazy person to lead the greatest uh, country in the world. And another country stood to benefit. In the confusion created by President Trump's zigzagging policy and abandonment of an ally, Russia moved in to fill the gap. Vladimir Putin saw a chance to make himself the new kingmaker in Syria and perhaps throughout the Middle East. It will now be Russia and Turkey and perhaps Iran who will make the decisions about what happens in, in that part of the world. And, and our ability to do that has been diminished. So too has America's reputation. Nishti Murad stayed in Kobani, but the self-run Kurdish enclave she hoped to build, Rojava, is gone. And so is trust among the Kurds. The American allies now left living with the consequences of an American betrayal. I'm just wondering what is America doing? They left us to the death. We're dying here, but nobody cares. If you were us, what would you do? My people is getting slaughtered. The children are getting killed. I don't know what to say. And now people are saying, wow, what a great outcome. Congratulations. It's too early to me to be congratulated. But we've done a good job. We've saved a lot of lives. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.